Hello viewers. Uh, today I want us to discuss uh, a form 3 topic. It's a uh, basic chemistry and I'd like to uh, discuss uh, gas laws. Before we get into anything to do with the laws involving gases, I want us to define some very simple concepts in gas laws. One is that matter is made up of very small particles that are always in continuous random motion and we normally have three states of matter. The first one is solid, the second one is liquid, and the fourth one uh, is, the third one is uh, gases. So in this topic, basically, we are going to talk about specifically gases and their laws that governs uh, gases. Now, gases are only affected by two physical conditions and that one is namely temperature and pressure. So the volume of gases are normally affected by two conditions, namely temperature and pressure. Now, we have some SI unit of uh, some principles and the first one is temp pressure. Pressure, we can have the units as Pascal or Newton per square meter. This is not negative. Then we also have atmosphere. So pressure can be given in terms of atmosphere, millimeters of mercury, or even centimeters of mercury. Remember, mercury has the formula Hg. Now, how about temperature? Temperature can be given in two ways, in degrees Celsius or in degrees centigrade, or even Kelvin. Now, I've given you a very simplest method of conversion of Kelvin to degrees Celsius and degrees Celsius to Kelvin. So if I was given degrees Celsius and I'm told to convert it into Kelvin, I just add 273 to the degrees Celsius. If I am given Kelvin and I'd like to calculate for degrees Celsius, I just subtract 273 and we'll do several examples in the next law. Now, let us tackle the first law of gases. Let me call it Boyle's law. So what does Boyle's law entails or state? It states that for a fixed mass of a gas, volume is inversely proportional to the pressure. Now, when I have a fixed mass of a gas, the volume of the gas is inversely proportional to pressure. What do I mean? As the volume increases, the pressure decreases. Now, for me to remove this proportionality sign, when I substitute it with an equal sign, I must have a constant, say k, divided by p. So when I take this one and replace it with an equal sign, it will just be um, k times 1 all over p. That one will give me v to be equal to k all over p. So when I want to make k the subject of the formula, this one is all over 1, I cross multiply. And therefore I will have PV is equals to k. So pressure times volume is equal to a constant. It therefore means that I can write the formula for Boyle's law as P1 V1 is equals to P2 V2. It is that very simple. So this is how we derive Boyle's law. Remember I said that for a fixed mass of a gas, volume is inversely proportional to pressure. It therefore means that as the volume increases, the pressure decreases. Now, I'd like us to do some graphical representation of Boyle's law. If I have a graph of, say, volume on the y-axis against pressure. Remember, as the volume increases, the pressure decreases. So that will be the shape of the graph. What if I plot volume against the reciprocal of pressure? What is the shape of the graph I'll obtain? So this will be the shape of the graph on the x-axis and on the y-axis when I have volume against 1 all over p. Whenever I have such a graph, I will have such a line. And it is a line of best fit. And it must be a straight line. So I have this very simple question example. We've been told 
a fixed mass of a gas at 1023 pascal pressure has a volume of 25 cubic centimeter calculate its volume if the pressure is doubled so i normally advise students first to write the variables that you've been given one when you're given pressure the first one i can call it pressure one and i it is 1023 pascal remember the volume which is volume one is equals to 25 cubic centimeter then in the next item we've been told something the pressure is doubled so when it is doubled it means that pressure 2 is equals to 2 times 10 23 pascal and then we are asked about volume 2 how do i calculate it it's very simple i'll take p1 v1 is equals to p2 v2 but remember i want v2 so what will i do if i want v2 i divide everything by p2 so divide by p2 divide by p2 therefore v2 is equals to p1 v1 all over p2 therefore i'll have this expression what is p1 1023 pascal times what is v1 25 cubic centimeter and finally what is p2 p2 is 2 times 10 23 pascal and when i feed such an expression in my calculator i will automatically have 12.5 cubic centimeter that is how simply we do it keep it in mind we have different expressions of pressure and volume is specifically cubic centimeter that we are given. Sometimes it can be a cubic meters. So this is one way that you can do our question. At some point in time, you may be given volume. Uh, pressure 1, volume 1, and volume 2. And you are needed to find P2. It means that P2 will just be equal to P1, V1, all over V2. I hope you can try some other questions that you're given in school. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe on my videos. Bye.